So whatever day it is in lockdown, I'm not keeping track anymore. There's no point. I've actually managed to put a pair of jeans on, which is quite astonishing considering anything I've worn for the past week and a half has been elasticated at the waist. You know what? I'm actually excited for when you don't have to start Google Hangout and ask everyone how they are and how they are about the situation. I'm bored of that, that <laughs> yeah. conversation. Yeah. You know, you have to work in the small talk of, oh, are you well and stuff like that, which is, yeah, my job. Just had a fantastic pitch. You know, it was nice to sort of talk away from what's going on and what is coming up later in the year and to sort of look forward and not just throwing ideas straight out of the van, but keeping a hold of what's sort of true to brands as well. So it was really nice, really successful. I can't thank the guys enough. Soph, David and Freya. I know everyone is kind of talking about the impact that um, this whole situation is having on our campaigns, but I just wanted to talk about the impact that it's having on our team. I honestly have never felt so connected to the team that I work with. I think having a team go through a difficult situation together just bonds people so strongly. And I think it's also such a good exercise in trust. So we can't chase each other. We can't be in people's faces saying, have you done this by that time? We just have to trust each other that it's getting done done everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing and we just have to rely on people to get on with it um so we have been an absolute force to be reckoned with our team is absolutely smashing it at the moment and i'm so proud of everyone i'm really proud of the work that we're creating we've done some amazing reactive campaigns our clients are so pleased and it just really is such a good opportunity for us as an agency to show what we can do Every time I have a Google Hangout with the video team, it just makes me more and more worried about Matt Wyatt. I mean, the, some of the ideas he's coming up with are completely crazy um, and I'm worried for him. So I think that it, it only goes without saying that I'm going to try and skip to Matt's little world every single day to see what he's up to. I want you to grab an object that you have around the room and start bicep curling, please. Session in full swing. What is that? What have you got there? That's a shotgun. You start grabbing objects, so let's fucking work out. All right, fine. I've got a fan and you've got a shotgun. All right, 20 yeah, bicep curls, right? 19, 18. Yeah, put 10, put 10. Excuse me, I'm leaving the class. Yeah. I know you've got a gun, but... Get them places. Squat with a gun. Squat with a gun. Squat with a gun. So a really good Lockdown Live lineup today. Um, we've got all sorts of different people on, but I think the highlight could be the media editor of The Guardian, Jim Waterson. How are you, my good friend? I haven't spoken to you for a long time. Hello, I'm good. I've just been speaking to Mr. Motivator about his plans to bring uh, Mr. Motivator back to BBC One. So that's, that's the level of story that The Guardian is covering today. Now stick with it. Drop the hands down if you want to have a rest. You don't have to keep it up there all the time. Okay, let's put it up there. Let's go. Everything that used to be normal um, is now out the window. I think the, the weirdest thing is the speed with which, well, of course we're locked inside for the next three weeks. Of course there's literally no sport on the telly. Well, of course, you know, you shout at anyone if you see them even daring to go out for more than a quick nip to the shops. It's, 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 it's amazing how quickly our brains just get used to it, right? News is very weird now. It's, it's all, um, you know, Prince Charles got like a potentially threatening disease, the heir to the throne yesterday. It wasn't really the main story. And I am also enjoying the other thing with news at the moment is you're getting to see everyone's house. Um, you sit there watching the evening news and Channel 4 News is coming from Krishnan Guru Murthy's uh, front room. In terms of actually finding the positive stories, I imagine, not looking at the numbers, the positive stories don't get as many reads as the negative stories. You know what, in, in, in normal time, that's, that's right. And obviously the death stats and the, the really grim stuff affecting people's lives is being read enormously. But people are desperate for anything upbeat. People are desperate for a bit of hope and anything that like lightens the mood. It seems to me like over the last couple of weeks, politics has sort of fallen out of, of the news in a sense that a lot of things seem to have fallen away from an importance point of view. And this is really now you know, the the number one thing. And it's almost you can't really talk about any of the other stuff because obviously you're still trying to hold them accountable from a government point of view, but maybe less from a political party point of view. I mean, I'm just trying to think of all the little examples in terms of scrutiny of politicians that would have previously been massive. 
uh, we basically passed a law without any votes last week, giving the government power to turn us into a police state, and no one really disputed it. We nationalised effectively most of the railways last week, and it was barely a story. A Tory government is paying 80% of workers' wages when they're unemployed. Well, that's normal. Well, of course they do that. Two yeah. weeks ago, these things would have been crazy. So just a quick update from the Insights team. Sam and myself have been kept quite busy with reports. We want to be keeping our eyes out on all the changes that have been happening. I think what we've been seeing is the pace of everything moving. Everything's happened so fast. Uh, one example would be even just with the app stores. And what we were seeing on the top 10 charts has completely changed with house party, uh, remote conferencing tools, Zoom. You know, I spoke to my dad yesterday. He said, oh God, you see, Great timing, that, that house party app just got released. No, it hasn't, it hasn't just got released, it's just everybody's habits have changed, so now it's now it's booming. So a, a lot of these products have been around a long time. Some of them have been around too long. You know, Skype, been owned by Microsoft for five years. It's, if it wasn't, it would probably be in the place that Zoom is right now. So you've really been able to see a rise of, of some of these businesses. I think they're gonna become very, very powerful over the next few years. In terms of Instagram, what we've been seeing is Instagram Live the usage in that is just surging. Brands and influencers are using that to connect with their consumers and their followers in real time. It's a great way to really make sure that you're delivering relevant content to your audience because everything is changing so quickly. Uh, an incredible thing happening tonight in the UK. So at 8pm tonight, there will be a clap for the NHS. You know, a unique time in, in, in society that that's, that's where we've got to. But I think maybe the best thing that has come out of this is the the reclassification of, of these health workers, understanding what a key worker is. Hopefully we, we come out of this in a society that changes how we value those people. They're going through some awful, awful times in order to protect us, protect the country. So as a country, we're going to get out there at eight o'clock tonight um, on our balconies, in our gardens, on our front doorsteps and pay tribute to the amazing people in the UK working in the NHS. Go on, just lift up your cigarette like this. Just give me a few of them, yep. Lift the cigarette, lift the cigarette. 